Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to tonight's broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Start inviting your friends. Call your friends to come so that we can have a good time tonight. A good time in the presence of God. Amen. And when we are in his presence, there is surely fullness of joy. There is liberty that is there. So tonight, wherever you are in the comfort of your home, just join in and connect with me as we are on day number four in our Believe Revival. We just say amen. Where you are, just say amen. We just start to give God the praise. Let's just open our mouths and just begin to pray. Father, we give you praise. Father, we glorify your name. Father, we magnify your name. For you are a great and mighty God. You are a great and glorious King. We give you praise today. We thank you for such a time as this. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this time. Heavenly Father, we magnify your name. You are a great and glorious King. Oh, we give you praise. There is none like you where you are. I welcome you if you are joining in. Just get in and just start to give praise. Just start to glorify the King of Kings because there is no one like him. There is none whose name is like him. We search all over. There is no one like our king. So tonight, just give him praise. Tonight, just praise his holy name. Where you are, right now, where you are, whatever you are doing, even if you are washing your dishes, whatever time zone you are in, just start to give him praise. Just start to give him praise. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the worship. Mighty King, we praise your name. Mighty King, we glorify your name. Mighty King, we magnify your name. Mighty King, we give you all praise. For you are a great and mighty King. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Abba Father. We worship you, mighty King. We worship you tonight. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Continue to open your mouth up and glorify the king of kings if you are joining in just join in from where you are just make a prayer and say god i thank you tonight god i thank you tonight for you are my god and that is who you are you open doors you do great and mighty works we give you praise mighty king we give you praise heavenly father oh there is none like you pray 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 where you are pray pray Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, we praise you tonight. Oh, we glorify you tonight. Abba Father, we thank you for your sweet presence. We thank you for your sweet presence tonight. In this place where you are, just connect to the anointing of God. Where you are, just connect to the presence of God. Oh, Jabba Zala de Beha, Lezari Doza, Zadahaya, Lide Behezajahaya, O Zaliba de Hazuja, Ride Behezeha, we declare you are the great and mighty King. Oh, Jabba Zala de Beha, Hallelujah, 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 have your way, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus, E Jabba Baha, O Zalida Rade Jabba Baha. We give you praise tonight. We give you praise, mighty King. We magnify your name, for you are the King of Kings. In the name of Jesus, we praise your name. Oh, we glorify his holy name. Just praise him. Just praise him, somebody. For our God is a great and mighty God. He's a great and mighty thing. King is a great and mighty ruler. He's a great and mighty King. We give him praise. We worship you tonight. We praise your name, mighty King. We glorify your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we praise your name. Jesus, we praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to our broadcast. If you're just joining us now, just like the broadcast, just share. Post, invite your friends, invite your family. If you are sitting with your family, encourage them to join you tonight as we continue in our Believe Week. I'm Pastor Ruth from Exalted Christ Church. And tonight with me is my husband, Apostle Michael Muta. He is the founder of Exalted Christ Church. And today we are here to revive you, to revive and encourage you. If you are one of those people who is being spoken to in our theme speaker for this week, that is in Mark 5, just verse 35 where Jesus is saying, do not be afraid, only believe. Tonight, you have come here, you have done a good thing because we are also here to tell you 
that do not be afraid just only believe tonight do not be afraid just only believe whatever it is whatever it is if you miss my broadcast today whatever situation that you have today do not worry do not be afraid but only believe because god has a word for you and he has a word to revive and to transform your life your life tonight in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah welcome welcome to those that are joining in just grab your bible your pen and your notebook where you are and just be ready to receive the word of god continue to like to share even comment in our in the comment section as we post even the scriptures you are allowed to even post those verses that you are speaking about engage engage and receive something tonight hallelujah hallelujah amen so i always love to start with the recap of what we have done uh, what we have learned in the previous day so yesterday what we learned is we were looking at the young man david and we got three principles that we got from david so the first thing that we spoke about yesterday was that uh, like david learned to walk away from negativity so disregard the negative things uh, that may come towards you uh, it might be your family member your friend uh, but like david uh, as you are moving in this walk of faith uh, as you are moving in this believers walk uh, learn to disregard and walk away from negativity and number two what we learned from the story of david which we shared yesterday is that you must have a faith response as a child of god what comes out of your mouth it must be a faith response because god has given you testimonies and to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony so you need to declare you need to declare words by faith and the last thing that we recognized yesterday is that as david was going to war he was not going alone but he was carrying the chief cornerstone who is jesus christ of nazareth and what does it say to you believer it says that wherever you go you must go with christ because he is the victory that you need he is the victory that you need and with him victory is certain so that is what we learned yesterday that is what we learned yesterday for those that were not there you can uh, link up on our faith chronicles page and check that message that we spoke about yesterday and tonight as we continue with our belief week i want us to focus on three things tonight so i entitled them the three p's that you need as a believer that you need to not fear but to walk in your faith hallelujah so the first thing is that you need patience secondly you need perseverance and thirdly you need to pray those are the three things that we'll be looking at tonight so i want you to listen write them down if you can so that you may remember and refresh and reread them even in your time when you have spare time then you can go through them and then you can listen to them hallelujah so now we're going to go to the reading of the word where you are grab your bible if it's on your phone go and grab your bible if you have hard copy grab your bible for those that are on their phones please don't go on whatsapp if you are listening now just go and read the word amen so let's open our bibles to first kings chapter 18 we're going to read from verse 41 so i will repeat the scripture for tonight is first kings 18 verse 41 hallelujah hallelujah so i will read we'll start from verse 41 and we'll go along amen and amen and the word of god reads and elijah said unto ahab get thee up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain verse 42 and ahab went up to eat to drink and elijah went up to the town of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees verse 43 and he said to his servant go up now look toward the sea and he went up and looked and said there is nothing and he said go again seven times verse 44 and it came to pass on the seventh time that he said behold there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up and say unto ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not verse 45 and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and ahab rode and went to jezreel verse 46 and the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he did it up his loins and ran before ahab 
to the entrance of Jezreel. Hallelujah. May God bless the reading of his word. Where you are, just say hallelujah. Just shout amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So tonight what we are going to look at is we are going to look at the three things that I've mentioned before. That is patience, perseverance, and um, prayer. So now when we read in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, we'll start there again. I'll repeat that particular verse. It says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So here it means that Elijah gave a declaration, a word by faith. So in Elijah's ears, he could hear that there was rain that was coming even before he had gone to pray. Why? Because by faith, he perceived that with my word and with the faith that I have, when I declare things, they become manifest. When I declare things, they start to happen. And what does the word of God tell us? It says that now faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things that we have not even touched. So Elijah, he knew that by the mere fact of me declaring uh, there was going to be rain because by faith uh, he knew that he had already heard uh, the abundance of rain in his ears. Uh, so Elijah spoke a word and that word eventually came to pass. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So what am I saying here is what? Uh, tonight I want to understand uh, from your perspective as a believer, when you have declarations, when you speak declarations, uh, when the word of God is released unto you, uh, when you read the promise of God even from his word. What do you hear in your ears? What kind of sound is produced in your ears? What kind of word comes forth? What do you hear? Do you hear a message of doom or do you hear that there is an abundance of rain that is coming because by faith you believe that you have received it? So majority of us, what we do, I'll take it in the natural when we know that maybe there's going to be rain in the month of November and December. Sometimes we do not prepare for that particular rain is it we just walk along and say well maybe when it rains that's when i'll go and buy an umbrella that is but here we see elijah is saying to ahab get up eat and prepare because i can hear the abundance of rain what is significant here is this that Elijah actually is preparing. So he is telling up what to do in preparation of what is going to come. So most times as believers, what do we do when there is a word that has been released that we do not prepare? Because here we see Elijah telling Ahab, go in and prepare. Go in and prepare. Most times when a word is released, whether we hear the abundance of rain or water, but when the word is there or when the word of God speaks it, we do not go back and then we do not prepare. Ah, if you are a child of God, walking and moving by faith, what do you need to do? I'm going to encourage you tonight. You need to prepare. You need to start to prepare. Here, yeah, Elijah is saying, Ahab, get up, go and eat and prepare because an abundant rain is coming. And so when that rain comes, it means that Elijah was saying to Ahab, you need to be ready because for sure he was guaranteed that that particular rain is going to come. So a child of God, what do you need to do? You need to start preparing. Don't lazy around. You need to start preparing. Start to prepare. If you are a woman that is barren and you de de desire to have children, what do you do? You just don't sit on the sidelines. No, no, no. You start to go on Gumtree. You start to go on Take A Lot. You start to go on Alibaba. And you start to say, this is something that my child will wear. This is something that I wear. Oh, this is a nice coat, but oh, this is the color of the necessary. You don't sit at long in despair to say, I do not have it. Oh, when will my time be? Oh, me, I'm not going to have children. We have been trying for 12 years. No, 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 no. You get up and you start to prepare. Tonight, I'm encouraging you, wherever you are, get up and start to prepare because what you must do and know and believe is that there is an abundance of rain that God has already spoken over your life. And when we find that abundance, it's in his word. So if he has spoken it in his word, surely it will come to pass. But tonight, don't sit around if you are believing God for that car. Don't just sit around and say, oh, and look at bicycles. No, 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 no. Start to look. What is your favorite car? How many liters do you want for that car to have? It should, it should it be a 1.6? Should it be a 0 or 1, 1 liter? whatever it is you want what make of a car do you want because you need to start to prepare 
according to the word that you believe God has spoken for you and according to what you desire within your heart. So don't just sit down. Start to prepare for it. Start to prepare for it. If you are looking for a job, you go into your shop and you start to buy that shirt. You start to buy that tie and you say, this is what I'll be wearing when I go to the office on Monday. And this is what I'll be wearing when I go to the office on Tuesday. Because why? You are a child of God and you can hear in your ears that there is an abundance of a job offer that is coming towards me. And when it comes to you, you have to be prepared. Now, how can it come to you when you only have a pair of shorts in your wardrobe and you are not prepared? How can that come to you when you have not even attempted to go for a driving lesson? How can it locate you? So you need to start to work up towards receiving what you can hear in your ears that it is coming to you. And here on this particular verse as well, here on, 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 on verse 41, what do we hear? We hear that Elijah had the ability to perceive that abundance of rain was waiting up. It means by his faith, he had the ability also to hear in his mind. Sometimes, most of us, our problem is that we do not hear anything at all. Our ears are so blocked. We have hearing problems that we think need hearing aids. Tonight, I want to cancel whatever deafness that you have tonight that is stopping you from hearing an abundance of rain, what God has spoken. I cancel every deafness tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Start to hear. If you need the, the, the ear but of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is here. You must cleanse your particular ears so that you start to hear and hear the word of God and hear what God has spoken and hear what God has said. Not to hear anything that is contrary. No, 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 no. That will challenge your faith, but hear what God has spoken and start to move with that word and start to run with that word. If your ears cannot hear tonight, hold your ears, put your fingers on your ears and say, today I am going to hear an abundance of rain from today forth. I am going Going to hear an abundance of rain. Let nothing stop you. Whatever has been put in your ear that is blocking you to receive. Today we untangle. Today we remove. Today we remove whatever obstacle is in your ears that stops you from hearing the word of God. Tonight, break loose, break free from that entanglement. Start to hear and hear the abundance of rain. Sometimes we only hear the negative and we never hear what is good and what God has spoken to us. And then that makes us to fear and not to move in belief as we hear Jesus say to Jairus, only believe, do not be afraid. But what we hear causes us to tremble. What we hear causes us to have negativity. What we hear causes us to move backward and not move forward with faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So tonight, say where you are, I am going to hear the abundance Abundance of rain, no matter what your situation looks like, no matter what your issue looks like, say, I am hearing the abundance of rain. Because when we read even the word of God, it tells us, even in Jeremiah, that is what Jeremiah says, that there are some of us who hear, we have ears, but they do not hear. They even have eyes, but they cannot see. Tonight, refuse to be that person. Refuse and say, no, 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 no. I will see with my eyes the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I will hear with my ears the abundance of God in my life. And I will experience it. And I will live it. And I will experience it. I will walk in the miraculous tonight. Don't let anything get to you. Don't let anything stop your ears from hearing. I repeat, don't let your ears be stopped. Don't let your ears be deaf. Tonight, you must not be deaf. Be spiritually alert. Refuse to be deaf. Be spiritually alert. And let God speak to you so that you may hear the abundance of rain. And now I'm asking, all right, some of us, let's say then, we are not deaf at all. We can hear. But my question is, what are you hearing? All right. What are the things that you're hearing? Here, Elijah was hearing great and mighty things coming. He was hearing an echo. He was hearing a loud thunder. He was hearing a, a, a more like a plunging sound of rain. But sometimes when we are a children of God, there are particular things that come to our ears. And then my question to you tonight is, what do you hear? What are you hearing in your community? What are you hearing from your colleagues? What are you hearing from your WhatsApp, from your Instagram, from your Facebook? What are you hearing? What is it that you're hearing? What does your friend tell you? What does your, your Facebook tell you? What are the news? What is the news telling you? And whose report do you believe? Hallelujah. Whose report are you believing? Because news is the way of encouraging a person either to act and not to act, isn't it? So when we hear, it is very important for us to realize what kind of message are we hearing so some people may be in this situation where we are in where there is COVID-19 
19 uh, and the only things that they are hearing is news that is coming from uh, the international news uh, news that is coming from whatsapp uh, and do news of doom and doom and do nothing that is positive uh, and then their life is now being governed uh, by the words that they are hearing uh, and they forget that they need to hear the word of god because the word of god is the source of their lives uh, so tonight my challenge to you child of god you who is listening to me is this uh, who are you hearing who are you hearing who are you hearing uh, and what are you hearing hear the word of god uh, in your hearing hear the word of god do not hear the negativity do not hear the negativity whatever it is uh, that is not of god that you are hearing uh, whatever it is that is not of god refuse it tonight and start to say i'm not going to listen to the news i'm not going to listen to anything else apart from the word of god what the word of god says is true and it's amen and that i am going to receive and that i choose to believe so tonight i'm saying whatever is negative whatever is negative that has drawn away your strength refuse to hear that particular news refuse to hear it refuse to hear it and start to hear the word of god because when you hear two things will happen. It's either that when you hear your faith is increased for the word of God says that in Romans 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what you hear is the ability to bring faith or to deduct faith from your faith account. So there are two things that will happen. Either you hear the word of God and your faith is activated and edified and increased or you do not hear the word of God and your faith is removed from you. So there is a deduction of that particular faith up until you run on zero percent fuel of faith because of the things that you are hearing so you need to continue to hear the word of god so that your faith may continue to grow so that your faith may continue to increase hallelujah hallelujah so tonight this is my challenge wherever you are read the word of god stand on the word of god read the word of god read the word of god read the word of god and start to act on that particular word because now in james it tells us that when we hear the word you must be a hearer and a doer of the word so when you hear the word automatically it means that it will lead you to action because when you hear the word what happens now the faith comes it comes to you and when it comes to you what then happens you are forced one way or the other the word becomes shut up in your bones and what does it propel you to do it propels you to act and you begin to act on the word and you begin to declare the word and you begin to breathe to live to eat to sleep to walk to do everything the word because it's now is activated in you so when you hear the word there is activation that comes in and you become strengthened and you begin to work more on your faith but when you do not hear the word of god what will happen to you there is death that will automatically come to you because your faith will automatically reduce to zero or even below zero degrees Celsius. It goes underneath dead, dead and cold. So what you need to always do is always remember that I need to have the word of God. I need to have the word of God in me. I need for the word of God to be activated in me. So let's go into the book of First Samuel chapter 4 and we'll start reading from verse 4. Why I want us to read this particular scripture is I want us to see what happens happens to a believer if they do not be, uh, hear the word of god and continue to walk in the particular word of god hallelujah so where you are just go to first samuel 4 we'll start reading from the scope first samuel chapter 4 we'll start to read from the scope hallelujah we're going to read the story of um priest the priest eli and we're going to look at priest eli and what happened to him and how he ended up dying hallelujah so i will start to read from verse 12 and then i'll skip a couple of scriptures as we go along hallelujah and verse 12 it says and there ran a man of benjamin out of the army and he came to shiloh the same day with his with his clothes red and with earth upon his head and when he came low eli sat upon a seat by the wayside watching for his water trembling for the ark of god and when the man came into the city and told it all the city cried out so here it means that eli was sitting and he was sitting and he was waiting for a word so remember what i said before that one word we need to receive it has to be a word that is coming from god because if it's a word that is coming from men it's going to lead to our destruction hallelujah so let's read forward let's go forward and on verse 14 it says and when eli heard the noise of the crime it said 
What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were dim, and he could not see. In verse 16, and the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And in verse 17, and the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and there has been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phineas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. Verse 18, and it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and he broke his neck and he died for he was an old man and heavy and he had judged Israel 40 years. Hallelujah. So here we see that Eli received a word and this word was made by Eli. Eli in his heart, I don't think at that particular time his faith was really functioning to the full capacity. So when Eli heard this particular word and then when he heard that the ark of God was taken, oh my God, uh, he fell down and he died. Some people that I'm talking to tonight, your faith has already died because of the things that you have heard or because of the situations that you have gone through. Uh, your faith is already dead. It fell and died that particular day that you had that catastrophe or that particular day that you went through uh, that agonizing situation uh, and your faith just died there and there. Uh, tonight I am here to revive and resurrect that faith uh, for we have Jesus who is the resurrection power. Uh, so his power should start to work in you tonight uh, so that you may revive, you may rise yourself up, you may stand up uh, and shake yourself from the dust, dust of every dust uh, and say I am standing on my faith uh, because this word that came, uh, it for me it would have been since Eli was the priest. Yeah, it says he had judged Israel for 40 years. So he knew that God from before had taken the children of Israel out of the, 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 the grip of the Pharisees. He had opened the Red Sea for them to walk on. He had provided manna. His cloud was a pillar of fire even in the night and a cloud even in the daytime. So he knew these stories. He had seen them. He had even experienced the glory of God in the temple where he was serving. So for him to die just like that is an awe for me because he should have been the one who should have known that oh, oh even though that the Philistines have taken the ark up, I know that my God is able to do exceedingly. Uh, God will miraculously bring that ark back up. Whatever has happened, uh, yes, we are in this situation now, uh, but I know my tomorrow is set uh, because my God will do great and mighty things. Today, he will do great and mighty things. He shouldn't have looked at what was said, but he should have looked and focused on the power of God rather than die. Tonight, do not die. Do not let your faith die. Do not let your faith just fall down to the ground. Rather than just rise up and begin to function in your faith. If you have been dead tonight, I want to tell you it's high time you stand up. You pull yourself up and you say, no, 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 no. It's for too long I've been here. My faith, where you left it, you know where you left your faith. You know the story that made you to have your faith die. Tonight, go back to that issue and begin to fight and begin to war and say no 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 I am rising up I refuse to die like Eli I refuse to have my faith die but I am rising I am rising I am rising in the mighty name of Jesus and here we see that Eli was actually died for the ark of God you might say well the ark of God yes was a significant thing but some of us here the things that have made our faith to die are things that we actually stand in awe of and we say how how can a person just die because of this, uh, you died because you just don't have margarine in your house, uh, or you don't have polony to eat in your house, uh, or it has been three or four days without you eating bread. Tula wena, you must rise up and start to walk in faith. Uh, how can your faith die over something that God can provide, over something that is like margarine, uh, over something that is like flour? No, 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 no. Uh, refuse to die. Uh, refuse to die. Refuse for your faith to die tonight. Uh, let me encourage you where you are. Uh, go where you left your faith, uh, where your faith you buried it if you buried it six feet under today go in take your shovels of faith and start to dig and open and start to dig and get it where you put it in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh i sense there is an activation there is an increase there is a revival whatever has been dead let it rise up tonight let it rise up say in your heart it's rising up say in your heart it's rising in my heart it's rising in the mighty name of Jesus. Refuse, refuse to die. Refuse, refuse to die. In the name of Jesus. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go back to our 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 scripture. Let's go back to first Kings. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Hallelujah. 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 Reba zadia haya. Let's go back to first Kings eighteen. Let's go back. Let's go back. We start to read. Let's go back to first Kings eighteen. Let's go back. Let's go back. We start to read. Oh, jazada ba 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 ba. We read. We read verse forty one. Now we go into verse forty two. And then here it says, and so Ahab went up to eat up and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Camel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Hallelujah! Here the word of God gives us two people, a comparison of two people who, when they hear a word of God, a word that has been spoken or a revelation that is come, two people who do two different things. We have an Ahab that goes up and he starts to drink, and then we have an Elijah that says, I have this word, I am going to go and pray, I am going to go and groan in the spirit, up until I receive that cloud, up until I receive that abundance of rain. Tonight, my question is, who of the two are you? Are you Ahab who goes in and who eats and drinks, or you are Elijah that will go into the house of prayer and begins to groan until they connect with the word of God, until they connect with the word that God has given them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Where you are, I'm just leaving this question with you uh, to think about it. Who of the two are you? Who of the two are you? Who of the, are you Ahab? Are you Elijah? But I want to encourage you, become Elijah who goes into prayer. That is our, our point two of our three Ps that you need to be a person that prays. Hallelujah. You need to pray. Prayer, prayer, prayer. It must be shut up in your bones. Prayer must be shut up in your bones. You must go into the prayer closet and you must put your head beneath the ground in fellowship with the Father up until you receive up until that thing comes to you, uh, up until that thing physically manifests you, uh, that you draw it out from your spirit. Uh, when you read the word of God, it says when you pray in tongues, uh, you are speaking mysteries. Uh, when you get in and you are declaring with groanings, uh, that man is not yet, you get into that prayer closet, uh, you start to groan. Uh, in tongues, you start to groan. In tongues, you start to speak up, you start to build, uh, you start to build that particular thing you want to see. Oh, Jagize de Hegal is over Higa Because you know what? When you begin to pray, you are making that thing to arise. The word of God says in Judah that when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, we start to rise up like an elephant. You begin to rise up as you go. So you need to be a person that prays. You need to pray, pray, pray. Oh, Jazada, Yezara, Doja, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So I encourage you must be like Elijah because here on verse 43, what do we see here? He went in and he started to pray. He began to pray, he began to pray, he began to pray, and he sent his servant and he said, Go and look up. And what did the servant do? He went and he looked the first time, he came back, he went and he looked the, the second time, he came back, he went and he looked the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh time. That is when the, uh, the, uh, the servant said, I can see a cloud that is like a fist. Ah, what did Elijah do here? He persevered. He persevered in prayer. He persevered with patience. He, he, he continued to grow. Some of us, we cannot even last two minutes of prayer when things are not working for our good. Tonight, I encourage you, persevere. Oh, in that thing, continue to grow. In that thing, continue to persevere. In that thing, continue to grow. In that thing, continue to persevere up until your answer comes to you and it's released to you physically you can see it so here we see that Elijah did not move even when the servant said there is nothing he kept on going he kept on going he kept on going there are times a woman who is listening to me men who is listening to me whatever youth child girl or boy you need to go in and stand and begin to continue groaning in prayer continue groaning in prayer continue praying until you receive that particular thing the children of God do not give up easily. Ha! Huh? Do not give up easily. When we read the word of God, we go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. It tells us of the fruit of the spirit. And one of the fruits of the spirit that it mentions, it mentions forbearance. It mentions in other versions of the Bible, they say patience. So you need to have that as the fruit of the spirit. 
spirit here that is the fruit of the spirit. Uh, so what do you need to do tonight? Uh, I want to speak to you if you do not have patience whatsoever, whatsoever and you say, ah, pastor, me, I am a short-circuited person. Uh, if things don't go my way and I just do it once, uh, ah, and then it doesn't work, then I leave it tonight. Uh, I'm going to deal with that short-circuitedness of yours. Uh, you are not going to give up. Uh, you are going to pray. You are going to pray if it does not happen. Uh, one time, I'm going to tell you, have this seven-point rule. Uh, say, if it does not happen to me, uh, one time I'm going to do it the second time. Uh, if it does not happen, I will do it the third. Uh, if it does not happen the third, I will still go on to the fourth. Uh, if it does not happen on the fourth, I will still go on to the fifth. Uh, if it does not happen in the fifth, I will go on to the sixth. Uh, for I know that on the seventh, uh, it's going to happen. Uh, on the seventh time, it's going to happen. And the word of God says, uh, the righteous man will fall seven times. Uh, but what happens? Each time, uh, he will rise up. So you need to keep on. Uh, you need to persevere tonight. Uh, pray and say, Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, give me the fruit uh, of perseverance. Give me the fruit uh, of forbearance. It means you are able to wait patiently uh, up until you touch that particular thing. Uh, you are able to wait patiently uh, up until you receive that particular miracle. Uh, you are able to stand. You keep on going. Uh, you keep on going. It reminds me uh, here in South Africa, every year there will always be a Comrades Marathon uh, and the people would run from Deben uh, to Peter Marisberg or from Peter Marisberg uh, to Deben. What would happen to the one that becomes number one? Uh, he would never stop or say or quit in the middle to say, ah, ah I can't do it anymore. Uh, but what do they do? They will keep on running with the same person uh, and they will persevere and endure up until they win and become the champion in Comrades Marathon. Uh, this walk of faith is like a Comrades Marathon, let me tell you. Uh, you can't stop in the middle uh, before you receive that medal. You have to focus. Uh, you have to keep on going. So you need to push. Uh, you need to have patience. You need to persevere up until you reach the mark. Uh, up until you reach the mark. Tonight, uh, let this be your prayer. Pray. Go and read Galatians 5, 22 uh, and begin to pray and say, uh, oh my God, uh, give me the fruit uh, of perseverance. Give me the fruit uh, of forbearance. Give me the fruit uh, of holding on and waiting patiently. Uh, give me that fruit tonight. Uh, let it be your prayer where you are. Let it be your prayer, brethren, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even when we look in the Bible, we see Abraham. We all say we are children of faith, just as Abraham is. What is significant about Abraham is that Abraham was a man who waited patiently. He was told a word and he only received that particular child after 25 years. And all along, Abraham kept on declaring that the word of God has spoken. God is able to fulfill it. The word in Romans chapter 4, it says that again, to help Abraham it means that things were not even working well for him. Things were contrary. That it was upside down but he kept on going and he said God spoke to me and gave me a new name and said I am Abraham so it means I'm a father of nations. Wherever you would go, you would say I am a father of nations. Even if he did not have the children he still walked again. So tonight your situation, if your situation is hopeless, I want to encourage you walk again as hope. Start to stand up and walk again as hope and begin to fight and begin to say I am getting there it might take me 25 years, but I'm going to get there. It might take me two weeks, but I'm going to get there. The thing that I want to encourage you is this. Do not give up. Do not give up. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on going. Oh, keep on going. What, whatever may come your way. Keep on going, child of God, because God is your source and God is your strength. I can say this confidently. God is your strength and God is your source. Ah, yeah, Zabadeh, he is able to do it. He is able to do it. He is able to do it. Do not give up hope. Be patient. Have patience. Keep on praying. Endure. Oh, because we know that when the night ends and there is morning, joy is coming in the morning. Because that is what the word of God says. Hallelujah. 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 And one other person that touches my spirit uh, when we look at the issue of perseverance uh, and even prayer is when we look at the story of Job. Uh, oh my, Job, when we read the book of Job, what happens in the book of Job? Uh, it has 42 chapters. Imagine, it will be 42 chapters of a person's life, a book written uh, about that particular person's life. So when I went again to the word and I began to read, uh, I realized that from, from chapter 1, verse 14, to chapter 42, verse 9, 
Job was struggling one way or the other. His things were not in order. His children had died. His properties destroyed. His wife telling him to curse God. Even his friends were coming against him. And he had nothing that was going on for him. But what does Job do? We constantly see in the book of Job that he was constantly talking even to God. And God was speaking back to him. That means he kept the fellowship of prayer. He did not stop praying. He kept the fellowship with God. Even if everything was not well, he still kept the fellowship with God. Ha, and you brethren, imagine if it was 42 chapters of your life. I'm sure some of you would only have been maybe one and a half chapters written because, well, in the middle we'll just then write and the person backslided and they were nowhere to be found because to the hardships would have been too much for you. But you must be like Job. He did not backslide. He did not go back. But what did he do? He kept on, he kept on, he kept on, he kept on, and eventually God gave him a double portion. God multiplied whatever he had because God gave him favor because he stood. 42 chapters, my brethren, it's not a joke. It means it was a groaning. It means it was painful. But what did Job do? He endured. He persevered. And in the midst of enduring and persevering, he kept on praying. Oh, he kept on praying. So my encouragement to you tonight is that keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Oh, keep on persevering. Do not lose of have patience because God is going to do it. Oh, whatever situation, the worst of it all, God is able to resurrect it. God is able to resurrect it. God is able to turn it around. Oh, he has the final say and his word is final. He is able to do it. Oh, take your prayer gear. Take your prayer kit and begin to pray, and begin to pray over that thing, and say my faith is not dead. Oh, as we come to the end of our session, open your mouth where you are, just begin to pray. You know the area where you need to change tonight. Cry out unto Jesus. Oh, as you pray, believe that walls are falling down, that the walls of Jericho are falling down, that every red sea that was in front of you is being opened. If you need a financial miracle, our God is able to bring manna and rain it in your life. Where you are, begin to pray and say, Oh God, open the windows of heaven. Especially if you are a child and you are hearing me, go in and begin to claim your harvest. As Malachi says that God will open the flood gates. Whatever fruits you have, they will not fall to the ground before they reproduce, but they will bring to fruition whatever it is that should come forth. Begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we pray for patience. We pray for forbearance. Oh, we pray for perseverance. Our prayer lives are being strengthened tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse to backslide, but we will persevere. Do not backslide. Do not backslide over silly things. Keep on holding on to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I declare, if you are hearing me, by the sound of my voice, I declare, open doors where you are. I declare the miraculous. Let your strength be increased in your faith. Let your faith be strengthened in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray tonight in Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that it's done over their lives. I thank you that it's done over their lives. I thank you that doors are being opened tonight. Uh, wherever they were afraid, I thank you that they are believing uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. If after the session you have a testimony to share, you have a prayer request to, to send through that you need us to work to pray in faith with you, take your pen and paper where you are and just write this number down. You can contact us, you can send a WhatsApp message, a voice note, or you can even call or have a WhatsApp call, whatever is preferable to you, and call us on plus two seven eight one four five zero. 
8309. I will repeat plus 27 814 508309. Hallelujah. Send us a message at all so that we can believe with you tonight. But I believe that God has already started a new thing in your life and great things are happening. If you want to send us an email, you can send us an email at Apostle Michael at exaltedchristchurch.com. If you want to send us an email also, you can communicate with us at Apostle Michael at exaltedchristchurch.com. Hallelujah. Our page is on Facebook. We have Faith Chronicles. We have Apostle, Apostle Michael's page. That is Michael Mucha's page. We also have Exalted Christ Church International, a group and a page as well. So you can go in on those platforms. You can like, you can share so that we can be together as we go through and proceed in this belief week. Believe week is going to be there up until Saturday night. So God has so much great things in store for you. And you must come and you must come and join in so that God will revive you in whatever area of your life you have need. In the mighty name of Jesus. We also have our YouTube page that is under Exalted Christ Church International. As I always say, our man of God is equipping us. His belief is that we must be equipped as believers to manifest the reality of God and to manifest in the world of faith in our communities, in our families, and in our homes. So on our YouTube channel, that is Exalted Christ Church International YouTube channel, there you will find other teachings that are there that are on faith. There is one teaching that our apostle has taught that is hold on, don't let go. So if you are in a situation where you need to hold on, go into our YouTube channel and you find that ministry that will touch and revive your life. So go in and like, subscribe and invite others as well. From me, Pastor Ruth and Apostle Mike and Exalted Christ Church, I want to say thank you for joining us tonight. And before I leave, I'm just going to pray for anyone who is sick with whatsoever sickness they have in their body. And I believe that God will heal you wherever it is be in your head. If you're having migraines right now, I command those migraines to go in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have any tumor in your body, I command that tumor to leave every cancer. So I destroy it with the blood of Jesus to and we declare that you are healed and totally healed in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever virus is in your body right now, I speak total healing. I declare a creative miracle. If your ear is not hearing properly right now, hold it, hold that ear and declare I am healed. I speak total healing in Jesus' mighty name. Those that have leg pains on your right hand side, if you have leg pains right now, I command that pain to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, if you have been diagnosed with ovarian sister tonight, uh, as you hear my voice, I declare the creative miracle. I declare they are dissolving right now uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Um, every kidney stones, uh, if you have been diagnosed and you are hearing me, you have kidney stones right now, uh, declare that you are healed. I declare, I declare, I declare a cleansing right now uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I think if you have any other sickness that I've already mentioned even now, I declare that you are healed by the blood of Jesus. By his stripes, you are healed tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you that it's done over every individual. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I give you praise and I give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name.